Hello there, beautiful souls. It's been a while, hasn't it? I've missed you. Have you missed me? <laughs> Listen, I want to hear about how you've been, but before we do that, we need to have a little chat. I think it's time we just address the old god in the room and get some stuff out there. So, <sighs> all right, let's do this. <laughs> mask off. I'm trans. Now I know some of you guys watching this video might be really confused because you're like, wait, I already knew that you were trans because you're non-binary. Non-binary people are trans. And I'm also aware that like I have talked about being trans a bit on social media, but I'm making this video because firstly, I now identify as trans in a different way to how I identified with it before. Like, I am trans femme now and I am medically transitioning and I want to talk about that. Um, secondly, when I originally came out as non-binary on this YouTube channel, I was like, oh, I'm non-binary, but I'm not trans. And that had nothing to do with internalized transphobia at all. Um, but I want to update y'all here on this YouTube channel to the fact that that's no longer the case and I am trans. Um, and then finally, I don't think there's a lot of like non-binary medical transition stories out there. Like, I mean, and in general, just not loads of non-binary representation. So I also want to just create this as a bit of an educational resource on like what a non-binary transition can look like. So let's get into it. I don't use the label trans. So I am taking estrogen um, transdermally, day one of estrogen. Let's go. Being trans has legitimately been one of my lifelong fears. It feels really weird to like admit that, like almost embarrassing because it feels transphobic. But y'all, I cannot tell you how intense my lifelong internalized transphobia has been. Like, I've been so scared of being trans since I was like, since I found out what it was, that people could transition from one gender to another. The moment I found out about that, I was like, fuck, shit, fuck, fuck, fuck. What if this could be me? And I would work so hard to convince myself and reassure myself, don't worry, don't worry, Quinn, that's not you. Don't worry. Don't worry. And I wanna talk about why I was so scared of being trans. Unpacking my fear of being trans unraveled a few different layers. Firstly, I was afraid of being trans because being trans literally makes you physically unsafe like everywhere in the world. So I was afraid of my safety. I have an anxiety disorder. I was afraid of social stigma, societal perceptions, you know, being beat up, dealing with the stares and all of that. I was afraid because I am desperate to be approved by my family and the people around me. And I was afraid that I would be judged, ostracized, lose loved ones in my life. I was afraid of being ugly. And that sounds horrible, but this is an experience I think a lot of trans people have. I was told by society that my only way of being beautiful was being successful at masculinity. And I was scared that if I started to pursue femininity seriously, that I would be doomed to be per forever perceived by society as ugly. And I'll talk about that more later. But let's talk a little bit about the societal state of being trans because y'all, it's fucking frightening. <laughs> the socio-political climate around being trans right now is fucking insane. Like, I'm sorry for getting a bit dark here, but being trans is scary to me, like from a physical safety perspective. Trans hate crime has quadrupled in the UK in the last five years. Trans people 
are killed, they're beaten up, they deal with an insane amount of social stigma, often struggle with rights, medical access. We currently, especially in the UK, but also worldwide, are dealing with an insane reactionary countercultural movement of TERFs or trans exclusionary radical feminists who just like hate us. And in the past, as a queer man who was very feminine, I always felt a lot safer being around women. But now as a trans person, knowing that a lot of women hate male to female trans individuals, that feeling of safety has been chipped away at a bit. And I'm afraid of using bathrooms. I literally have no idea which ones to use at this point in my transition. I find peeing scary now. <laughs> I find leaving the house dressed how I want scary. It's frightening. I have dealt with transphobic abuse since I have started to transition. It's not great. <laughs> like, it's difficult to be trans. I think literally everywhere right now. I mean, some places are worse than others. The UK is definitely not a great place to be trans right now. And if you don't already know, I live in the UK, but um, it's scary. I mean, I'm contending with JK Rowling, a woman with an insane following who has created a huge movement of hate towards the trans community. And she's just been endorsed by a dictator, Vladimir Putin, who's saying, yeah, this girl, she should not be canceled. She's got some good shit to say. And I'm just out here, one trans person, and I just wanna live. I just wanna exist. I just wanna vibe. And it's, it's hard, it's scary, it's difficult. There is so much garbage being thrown at trans people in media, in, in the streets, in the medical system, all the damn time. And it fucking sucks. The other thing, stepping away from safety, like psychologically and physically, is that being trans is also just hard. In, in our current world, like it is just difficult logistically, like it's expensive, transitioning medically is really challenging. Um, as a non-binary person, transitioning is extra challenging because it's often hard to prove like my identity. The current discourse around trans people is very binary. So I think for non-binary people, it's even extra difficult to kind of be like, hey, we're here too. We also may want to medically transition as well. Like things are a lot more complex. Um, I think for the non-binary community and a lot of non-binary people, myself included, also don't pass like, Obviously there's no way to pass as non-binary, but like I'm pretty much perpetually seen as a gender non-conforming man by most people. And so for me, I may one day be able to pass as a woman, but that's not necessarily something I'm striving for. And I may never be able to pass as a woman, but I'm also not really passing as like a man, at least not in a conventional way anymore. My safety may always be at a lower you know, degree of safety. I may always be at higher risk of abuse in the streets, etc. You know, I have, may have like certain challenges in the medical system because I may never pass as male or female and I may always be stuck as just being seen as non-conforming, which is seen as wrong by society, unfortunately. And all of these things were running through my brain when I was contemplating Am I transgender? Do I want to medically transition? But all of the fears that I had around rejection and physical safety, that fear wasn't the only thing keeping me from coming out as trans. One of the big things that kept me from coming out as trans for so long and something that has regularly had a pull on my identity in various directions, in many cases, I think holding me back from being really myself and authentic to the human experience I want to have is this YouTube channel. All right, roll the tapes. In May of this year, it will have been seven years since I started this YouTube channel. And at the start of this channel, I was a gay man talking about gay male experiences. And now I'm a trans, non-binary, goth, bisexual anarchist. <laughs> but towards the start of my channel, I started making a lot of drag content. Content where I would be very feminine, express myself very femininely. 
and that content didn't do very well. As I continued to make drag content, it was pulling the channel down in overall algorithm performance. So the content where I was feminine would get really low views, and then the content where I was masculine would get lots of views. And so I was in this predicament where if I wanted my YouTube channel to do well, I needed to either stop being feminine altogether or put the feminine stuff on a separate space. So I pulled my audience. I was like, should I keep creating feminine content as usual or should I put the feminine content on a new space? And y'all said, get this shit out of here. We don't want this. Put this on a separate YouTube channel. I'm not interested in seeing feminine content. Some of you guys even went so far as to say, I'm a gay man, I'm interested in content that I can relate to, and feminine content is not relatable to me as a gay man. Now pan to the modern day, and I've once again started to slowly express myself a bit more femininely, and that content has done worse in views. And it's not just because I've been expressing myself more femininely, like, in terms of my aesthetic, I've become increasingly alternative as well. At the start of the COVID pandemic, I started to really experiment with my aesthetic, and that's kind of when my views started to really tank. So from what I've observed, algorithmically speaking, the more I am true to myself, the more this channel fails. Now there's a couple things to mention here before I proceed. The first is that, yeah, I know first world problems, right? Like, I'm not making this part of the video to be like, boohoo, I haven't become a successful influencer. Like, listen, y'all, I will survive. I am fine. I'm very employable. This person who has been bombarding me with some lovely comments over the last few months is insistent that I get a real job. And you know what, Karen? Maybe I will. I am perfectly capable of doing that. I'm perfectly capable of going out there and getting myself employed. Another thing I want to just say is that like success on the internet isn't doomed because you're feminine and trans and like alternative. There are loads of alternative influencers, trans influencers who have been insanely successful on YouTube and social media. I'm just not one of them. Like the problem is that I started my content out doing one thing and now I'm doing a different thing. And for those of you that like did subscribe for the gay male content and don't watch anymore, I do not blame you at all. Like that's how social media works. You subscribe to someone for a certain kind of content and when they don't make it anymore, like I could completely understand why you would unsubscribe and not be as engaged. Like I totally get it. I don't blame you in the slightest. That's the name of the game. I'd probably do the same thing as well. Like obviously I wish that seven years ago I just had myself perfectly figured out, but that's just not the case at all. And I don't regret creating content that is no longer relevant to my current experience. Like that was part of my journey and I'm really proud of a lot of the old stuff I made. Definitely not all of it, but most of that stuff just isn't public anymore. So there you go. <laughs> the part of all this that gets kind of dark and depressing is the fact that this channel has been holding me back in being my true self. And that's largely based on like some of the, I think perhaps less admirable aspects of who I am as a person. I have always been desperate to be successful. I've always been obsessed with success. And since I started this YouTube channel, becoming successful as a YouTuber became something that I was obsessed with. I mean, unhealthily. Like, yeah, some of the videos I did do just for views, like a lot of what I wanted out of life was just to be successful here as a YouTuber. And yes, of course, there were other reasons that I was a content creator and there's so much joy that I got out of connecting with people. And I really enjoyed the creative side of making videos, but I wanted to be successful so bad. And the problem was I wanted to be successful bad enough. I was willing to capitulate certain aspects of myself to be more successful on the platform. Specifically, I would often perform masculinity for my audience. I would amp it up, I would do shirtless videos, I started working out like crazy, in part because I wanted to do better on YouTube. I saw all these really hot guys that were getting views just for being hot guys and I thought, oh, I can do that too. Like. Let's get on that train. I bought my dumbbells. I did workout videos on here and I was like, I'm gonna become a hot guy. I'm gonna get views for being a hot guy. I had comments saying, I literally clicked on this just for the thumbnail, on some of the thumbnails where I was more like masculine and showing off my muscles and stuff. To some degree, I was starting to see success for my masculinity and I didn't want to let that go because I wanted to be successful. But I wasn't just performing for YouTube and for views. I was also performing for society because I wanted to be successful at being attractive. At the start of this video, I mentioned my fears around coming out as trans and one of my fears was being ugly. 
Like I wanted validation and I was told that the only way I could be beautiful was to be masculine. So I leaned into that hard. Like there was a time when I was genuinely considering steroids because I struggled to put on muscle mass and I'm not even kidding. Like it sounds horrible and superficial and shallow to say, but like, I was taking like herbal supplements that were supposed to help increase testosterone, which is hilarious considering I have no interest in having more testosterone now. But like, I was desperate to be beautiful and I thought the only way that I could be attractive to anybody was to be masculine. And one of the reasons for that is because like in gay male society, like masculinity is praised above all else. Like I know a lot of gay men that are kind of misogynistic but beyond that just not attracted to femininity at all and just to be clear like that's fine like it's totally okay to be exclusively attracted to masculinity i think when it gets toxic is when like you shun someone who's wearing nail polish or whatever you know and i was trying to master that kind of like feminine masculinity blend for a little while but i was still ultimately like actively suppressing my feminine side to be more attractive in my first ever relationship with a man, like when I started doing drag, like he like was like, I am gay because I'm attracted to men and I'm not into this stuff. You know, like it, he just made me not feel great for being feminine. And so did like the rest of gay male society. Like I was on Grindr, I was on Tinder. I wanted to be attractive. I wanted to get those matches. So I would amp it up. I would get those like that good lighting and get that those six pack photos. And I would do everything I could to be a hot guy because I wanted to fuck. I wanted to be attractive. I wanted to have a sex life. I wanted to be dateable. And I really thought that the only way I could do that was to be masculine. Now for y'all who followed me just to see someone be masculine but then weren't supportive of me being feminine, don't follow me. Don't follow me if you're not interested in seeing every aspect of who I am. Now I may be trans feminine, but I'm still gender queer and you better believe that I can still deliver on that hot guy content. But if you want the hot guy content, you're gonna have to put up with quite a lot of hot girl content now too. Bisexuals, you're welcome. Now while we're talking about beauty and being trans, we need to talk about the fact that society often tells the trans community that we are ugly for being trans. And the image I saw growing up of trans people was often horrifically filled with like transphobic vitriol and especially with male to female representation in the media, I often saw horrible articles like they're just men in dresses. This image of trans people as inherently ugly is so fucked up and disgusting and transphobic. And it was a major barrier in me being my authentic self. And that's really sad. There are so many stunningly beautiful trans people I've had the joy of meeting or seeing online. And trans people are fucking hot. They're fucking gorgeous. And I really want to redefine traditional aspects of what it means to be a gender. I think one of the things with male to female people especially is that people that go through testosterone puberty often have specific signifiers of that testosterone puberty on their face. And those signifiers are difficult to get rid of without undergoing something called facial feminization surgery. Now, estrogen absolutely feminizes the face a lot more than people think, but some of those testosterone markers are hard to subdue. But I wanna rewrite what it means to be feminine successfully. I wanna rewrite what it means to be a woman. You know, there are hot girls out there that have slightly extended eyebrow ridges and hot girls out there with some fine ass jaws, you know, like, I have no issue, obviously, with male to female trans femme individuals getting facial feminization surgery. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's something I may consider doing for myself at some point. But, like, I just want to challenge what it means to be beautiful, conventionally and otherwise. And obviously, this is easier said than done. And I want to acknowledge that, like, this was a big barrier for me in transitioning. And I recognize that it is for other people too. Like, it's all good and well to say, oh, let's challenge beauty standards. But then we all want to get matches on dating apps. We all want to be seen as pretty. We all want 
validation. I mean, not all of us. I think some of us have managed to transcend the shallow worlds of conventional beauty standards, but I have not. I've definitely done a lot of work to overcome my relationship with conventional beauty standards. And I've also overcome a lot of internalized transphobia that told me that I could not be pretty as a trans person. And I'm like, that's false. But I'm not suddenly enlightened and free from the world of conventional beauty standards. Like I wanna be beautiful still. I still have it in my head of this desire to be beautiful in a conventional way in terms of Western beauty standards. And I hate myself for it, but it's just true. So this is not me saying that I've escaped that system. This is me saying that I wanna continue to try to push myself and challenge it. And I encourage y'all to join me in that battle. I spent my entire life trying to perform masculinity, but I'm done performing. Listen, if you're out there and you're also trans and you're also performing your gender for the attraction or the gaze of other people, I understand, I totally get it. I did it for literally my entire life up till now, but oh my God, it's just so much better to be yourself authentically. And I think that people will recognize that and be attracted to you for who you are. I know that sounds cheesy and maybe a bit cringe, but it's true. I think this whole kind of thing of being born in the wrong body is something I never felt. I love my body and I love how I was born. There are times where I lived as a man where I enjoyed my masculinity and my body and I'm not transitioning because I hate my body and because I hate who I am. So why then, if I don't completely hate my body, am I choosing to change it? I hate the narrative that like the only reason we would want to explore our genders or our bodies has to be born out of suffering. A couple of people I came out to as trans were like, oh, I'm sorry you've been suffering your whole life. And I was like, I didn't say that. You, you, you made that part up. But suffering isn't the only motivation for change. And for me, transitioning in a feminine direction brings me an enormous amount of joy and euphoria. And also crucially, it just feels correct for me. So my transition is really one of joy as opposed to trying to amend suffering, so to speak. But now I'm also non-binary and I wanna talk a little bit in this last section of the video about what a non-binary transition means. This isn't really a coming out video because I came out as non-binary last year and I still identify as non-binary. I'm just now moving in a more feminine direction physically. I see myself as transfeminine. Transfeminine is a term for people that are essentially assigned male at birth and moving in a feminine direction. I like the term transfeminine because it doesn't imply a specific transition trajectory. Like we often hear the terms male to female, which implies you've started at male and then you're moving to female, which does not fit me as a non-binary person. So transfeminine is a nice term to describe my transition, which is moving in a feminine direction without implying that I see myself as a woman because I don't. In terms of pronouns, I still use any pronouns. I'm so used to being relegated exclusively to the role of male. So when someone does give me a cheeky she, it's really nice. It's like, oh, cool. Like you see me as beyond that. You don't exclusively view me through that which I was assigned at birth. And that's nice. So I am currently three months on estrogen. I have made the decision to medically transition. Not every non-binary person wants to transition in a medical way. That was just something that I wanted for myself and for my trans experience, basically. As a non-binary person who gets a lot of euphoria out of an androgynous appearance and a femme-leaning appearance, for me, taking hormones and essentially medically transitioning is a way to physically move away from the masculine veins that were assigned on me without choice and moving in a more feminine direction. So I really like appearing androgynous, I really like appearing feminine. And sometimes, every once in a while, I do like appearing masculine as well. So I wanna talk a little bit about what a non-binary transition can look like because I'm talking exclusively through the lens of my experience and what I'm doing with my body. So I'm taking a full dose of estrogen and not blocking my, my testosterone. But a lot of non-binary people have different options when it comes to a medical transition and those options aren't really discussed 
anywhere, like, at all. First things first, a lot of non-binary people choose to microdose hormones. That means that they take very small dosage of testosterone or estrogen, which means that they'll have some effects over potentially a longer period of time, but maybe not have full feminizing or masculinizing effects. Now, microdosing is not exclusive to the trans community. There are cis men out there who take estrogen to have smoother skin. So I also like talking about my transition as the different parts that make up my transition as opposed to exclusively through the lens of gender, my transition isn't exclusive to my gender identity. The decisions I'm making to change my body can also just be because that's what I want to do with my body. Like, I like having softer skin. That doesn't have to be linked to being a woman or to being a man or to being non-binary or any of that. Like, that could just be wanting softer skin. And I know some people will have very mixed feelings about this, but personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with anybody taking hormones if that's what they want to do for their body. So if cisgender people want to take hormones, and they do all the time, by the way, uh, let's talk about cis men who take testosterone to have more muscle growth. Um, you know, there are loads of different people out there who take hormones, um, and some of those people aren't trans. So I do think it is valuable to widen the conversation of medical transition and hormone taking beyond exclusively like trans and different gendered experiences like I am non-binary and I am trans but not everybody who is doing a medical transition like me actually is those things and that's cool and amazing let's talk about CIRMS CIRM stands for selective estrogen I forget I forget we're gonna yep selective estrogen receptor modulators and I think that there's a testosterone equivalent, but I don't know anything about that. So CIRMS for trans femme individuals or male to female individuals, they refer to ways that you can literally like customize your physical transition with hormones. And I need to add a very strong disclaimer before I go into the details on this, that I am not a medical professional. And even though like I like to glamorize my own transition and I'm a big fan of like transhumanism and biohacking and that kind of thing, th those are my philosophies in life and you know, messing with chemicals and the, and medicine is dangerous and there isn't tons of information out there about these drugs and what they do to your body. I'm not currently on any of these drugs. Please take what I say with a grain of salt, do your own research, be very careful if you choose to get on these drugs. But that said, these drugs are really heckin' cool. Some male to female people, for instance, don't want boobs. Um, there are also like, you know, women, trans women who don't want boobs. And for people who are on estrogen, breast growth is basically inevitable. So some people choose to go on CIRMs to selectively modify how estrogen interacts with their body. There's a very popular CIRM out there called Relaxathene, which can basically mean that estrogen will feminize your body and yourself without feminizing your breasts. So it means that you won't grow breasts, but you will be feminized in other aspects of your body. I just want to bring CIRMs up as an example of ways that non-binary people can physically transition and get a lot of gender euphoria without necessarily conforming to a traditional transition trajectory. Not every trans person, binary or otherwise, wants to medically transition, but medical transition is also not exclusively for those who are binary trans. So, there we go. So that's the physical side of my transition. I want to also talk about the emotional and like societal ramifications of my transition as well. So emotionally, it has definitely affected my mood and my personality. Um, I don't know how noticeable that is to other people. Like I'm definitely still me, I'm definitely still Quinn, um, but estrogen can affect your personality, it can affect your mood. I feel like some of the changes I've noticed in my personality might also just be due to the fact that I'm really heckin' happy on estrogen and like so it's kind of hard to measure for me exactly what has changed but I definitely feel very different. I feel a lot happier, I feel a lot more confident, it's like been very mood boosting for me and that's been really interesting to explore. Estrogen can have a lot of effects on your mood and personality and your emotions and for me those have all been extremely positive. Um, so that's my experience with that. It also affects sex and your sexuality quite a bit. I have also really enjoyed those changes. I won't be going into that tons in this video, but maybe I will in the future. In terms of my sexuality, um, outside of sex acts themselves, um, I'm still super hella bisexual. I'm still attracted to multiple genders. I think my desire has shifted a little bit in the responsive direction um, and it's slightly less spontaneous, but 
I would say that my sex drive is still reasonably high. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> um, if you're confused about the response to spontaneous desire thing, I'll little, put a little card to that video, but that's a really interesting thing to explore. There are a lot more heterosexual men that are attracted to me than I have ever had before in my life. I have found that really surreal because I've never had straight men attracted to me. Um, I have had straight men fetishize me in drag, but like I've never had straight men like be attracted to me um, just in general out of drag. That's odd. I've also found that there are a lot less gay men that are attracted to me. And to be fair, like that part I did kind of expect because gay men generally in my experience are less attracted to femininity and I express myself a lot more femininely now. So that's not massively surprising to me. I would definitely say that I have a slight preference to dating bisexual or pansexual individuals. I am still genderqueer, and so like I do sometimes express my gender in different ways. I am a lot more feminine these days, but sometimes I do want to express myself more masculinely, and it's nice to date people where I don't have to think about how I perform my gender at all, because I'm like, either way, if you're bisexual and you date me, like, you stay winning. <laughs> like, and that's ideal for me, it's great. So that's my non-binary transition. It has been so long since I have filmed a normal YouTube video. I do really want to get back into creating content. I do think the format of that content will probably be long form content from now on, and it will probably be more centered around left tube, but still queer topics than it was before. Um, and I hope that you guys will enjoy that content. Um, I really do. This video is um, obviously deeply, deeply personal. And, you know, I am nervous about it. Um, I was very scared to like film this and put this together. Um, so I would ask that you be kind with my YouTube journey, which has been all over the place. Um, but I do really appreciate you tuning in. Um, and I, yeah, if you do decide to continue on with my YouTube journey, thank you, and that would be cool, and if not, that's okay. Thanks for being along the journey at whatever point you were, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic life and journey ahead of you. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, I guess that's all. Uh, insert outro slogans here. <laughs> I have no idea how to do YouTube anymore. Goodbye. <laughs>